thank you very much. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, it's not my first time to ALEC. I was actually here in 2002 talking about uh, climate change and 2005 talking about Copenhagen consensus. And what I'd like to try to do, obviously this is one of the most crucial discussions that we're having uh, uh, right now on global warming, try to give you an update, try to give you a sense of where are we standing with this and also start thinking about how do we do things smart. And of course, this is the kind of issue that you need to focus on on state levels, starting to think about where can we actually do good. So if I could just show you my, my, my slides and say, overall, if we're going to have any kind of conversation about climate change, we've got to remember, presumably, this is not about fixing climate change per se. This is about making a better world. And so we've got to ask ourselves, is doing climate change, and certainly the way we do it right now, is that really the best way to do it? And I will argue, there's a lot of sense out there that what we're doing is not rational, but just simply fashionable. We're talking about doing stuff that makes us feel good rather than stuff that actually does good. And I'd like at least to start having a conversation about, could we do this better? Could we perhaps remove some of our myths about how we think about global warming? Start saying, let's not have panic as our good guide. It's unlikely we make good choices if we're scared witless. Shouldn't we start having a sensible conversation about how do we actually deal with the world's big problems? How do we actually end up doing good? Because at the end of the day, that's what everybody wants, isn't it? And if it is, shouldn't we then start thinking about how we do that? So this is really about saying, how do we spend our money to do the most good? We need to realize that if we spend money on some, plane, some things, we can't spend them on other things. I know you all know that, but it's incredibly important to put that forth to the electorate and make sure that they realize this conversation. I'm actually, uh, we just engaged in, in, in Wall Street Journal. I had a, a full page in Wall Street on Monday, uh, and you might want to take a look at that, outlining some of the big problems in the world and some of the things I'm going to be talking about here today. But we're also then engaging some of the top leaders and thought leaders in the U.S. We actually have uh, Boehner, uh, the minority whip, uh, Pelosi didn't want to do it, so we have Harold Ford from the Democratic uh, uh, Leadership Council comment on this on Monday. Uh, the next Monday, we hopefully have uh, uh, Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton. Uh, then we have uh, Steve Forbes and uh, Bill Gates, and hopefully we'll also have McCain and Obama come up with their conclusions and how would they spend money? How would they spend extra money? And that's the kind of conversation that I'd like to get you thinking about towards the end. But let's first think about climate change. Think about global warming and say, what should we do? This is a, a, a picture I, I gave a presentation together with Al Gore uh, to Congress last year. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure this must be the second before Al Gore realizes who I am uh, because he's still smiling. But the main point, of course, is that this is really a conversation about what should we do about global warming, presuming that we all want to do good. Don't we want to have a conversation about how do we actually do a lot of good rather than just a little good? And I'd like to just simply make four very simple points. Those are the same four points I try to make in the book. Because global warming, yes, it's a huge issue. There's lots of, tons of stuff out there. The UN Climate Panel publishes three 800 page books, which are just summaries of all the thousands or even tens of thousands of studies that we have out there outlining what is climate science. But there's no way we can have a conversation based on so much information. We need to try to summarize it. And I'm going to try to summarize this debate in just four simple points to make us understand this conversation better and think about how we do this. So first point is global warming is real and it's man-made. I think we need to come to terms with the fact that this is actually one of the places that we should congratulate Al Gore. I'll get back to why we should not just uh, do that. But saying, listen, global warming is real. It's happening. That's what the overwhelming number of climate scientists are telling us. It also seems fairly reasonable to say there's a very simple uh, physical uh, uh, relationship to global warming. So let's say, yes, it's on the agenda, thanks to Al Gore. We should also realize, I would argue, that our best information comes from the UN Climate Panel, the so-called IPCC, that just published its last report last year. The likely temperature rise by the end of the century, to give you a sense of proportion, is about 4.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And you also see the, uh, the, the outlines are somewhere between 2.9 and 6.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So, that doesn't sound so bad, but it's important to say, given that this is a global average, this is not a trivial amount. This is actually significant change in the world, and it will have a cost. Uh, the economic models show that the total cost of global warming is about $15 trillion. That's the total cost of global warming. That's not a trivial amount. That certainly ought to be a number that ought to make most of us sit up straight and think about, all right, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with it smartly? 
On the other hand, of course, we should also realize this is by no means the main challenge of the 21st century. If you just take a look at you know, the net worth of the 21st century, it's about $3,000 trillion. So we're talking about half a percentage point of the 21st century. So it's not such that our kids and grandkids by the end of the century are going to be looking back and say, whoa, that was the big issue of the 21st century. It's one of the many issues that we need to fix in, uh, in, in the 21st century. It's one, but it's certainly not the only one there. So we need to get this right. So the first point is, yes, global warming is real, but we also need to get a sense of proportion. And that's the kind of thing I'd like to talk a little bit more about. And this, of course, becomes also a little more involved. I have 30 minutes, so I'm going to spend a little more time on this. The consequences are often vastly exaggerated, one-sided, and that leads to poor judgment. We've seen this in many different contexts, and I'll just give you a couple of uh, uh, ideas. And of course, this is crucial, because this is why we don't deal very well with global warming. And unfortunately, here, we also have to pull out Al Gore. It's obviously, it's not to Gore bash, because there's so many people saying these things, but Gore is the most visible guy. And I think this is where we need to be somewhat less thankful to Al Gore. He calls uh, global warming a planetary emergency. He, and this is a quote from his website. Uh, we have just 10 years to avert a major <coughs> catastrophe that could send our entire planet into a tailspin of epic destruction involving extreme weather, floods, droughts, epidemics, and killer heat waves beyond anything we've ever experienced. I would argue most of us hear this all the time. I'd like to take you through some of these issues and show you, well, this is actually true. And to what extent? Is it true? Well, let's just take a look at three central issues. Let's take a look at heat deaths, the idea that we're going to have killer heat waves, the idea that we're going to have more floods. Let's take a look at sea level rise. And let's also take a look at the more extreme weather. Let's take a look at hurricanes and get a sense of what is actually the problem and also what's the policies that should be enacted. And of course, those are the kinds of policies that would also be relevant in each one of your states. Let's just take a look at heat waves first. Are we going to see more deaths from heat waves because of climate change? Absolutely. As temperatures rise, we're likely to see more people. We're likely to see more heat waves, and we're likely to see more people die from heat waves. For instance, for Britain, it's estimated that by 2050, because of global warming, we are likely to see about 2,000 more people die every year. Now, that's a huge number of people. We should certainly recognize that. I would also argue we hear that all the time. But there's a curious point here. As temperatures rise, of course we're going to see more heat waves and more heat deaths. But likewise, we're also going to see fewer cold waves and fewer cold deaths, aren't we? Shouldn't we mention both? Of course, if this was a totally trivial number, maybe it wouldn't be worth mentioning, but it's not. Actually, all places on the planet, virtually all places, not sub-Saharan Africa, but most places on the planet, heat, sorry, cold deaths vastly outweigh the number of heat deaths. So if you look at the same estimates and say, how many more people are going to die from cold waves by the mid-century, it turns out it's going to be about 20,000 fewer people in Britain by mid-century. So I'm simply pointing out, isn't it odd that we're being told there's going to be 2,000 more people dying from heat, but we're not being told that there are going to be 20,000 fewer people dying from cold? And this actually holds true also for the planet. It certainly holds true for the US, but it even holds true globally. This is the only global estimate that we have, period published estimate. It actually estimates there's going to be 400,000 more heat deaths, but 1.8 million fewer cold deaths. My point is simply, shouldn't we hear both sides of that story? Again, this does not mean that there's no problems with climate change. If this was the only problem with climate change, maybe we'd want more global warming. But that's not the point that I'm saying. Because overall, there are going to be more problems than there are going to be benefits from global warming. That's why it's a problem. That's why we need to fix it. But there's something fundamentally wrong about only being told one side of the argument. Because that makes us over-worried. That makes us over-scared. It makes us panic and makes us unlikely to make smart judgments.